Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back at it again in Nepal. Yes, this is gonna be another episode of my little discovering interesting places all around the world series. Today we are in the Himalayan mountains. And you know, this region here is actually very much famous for its very, very, very challenging airports. You know, we have airports like Lukla, and we have also checked out that other airport here in the region. And today we are back at it again. This time around we are at Bajura, which is uh, on the west side of the country. And yes, indeed, it's in the middle of the mountains. And as you can see right here, this is uh, not a long runway. This is 500 meters long. This is going to be a very interesting video. This is actually, isn't this like kind of shorter than Lukla as well, even? Which is, by the way, counted as the most dangerous airport already. Let's see if this one can beat it at being the most dangerous airport, I guess. And fly some planes here. Now, this airport, it's actually a commercial airport. Yes, actual airline lines fly here like Tara Air, which we have also talked about on the channel before. This airline is actually counted as the most dangerous airline in the world because it has so many crashes. Not necessarily because it's a bad airline, but because, you know, of where it flies. You know, flying at a 500 meter long runway of a stall port isn't that pleasant, I guess. <laughs> actually, there are four airlines flying here probably every single day or so that connect this little airport to Nepal Gun, which is like the next major airport airport down here. Oh, never mind. It's Nepal Gunji. The American version would be Nepal Gun. Uh, but yeah, other than that, this airport is not very much known. There's not that much I can find out about it on the internet. The only other thing that I found out is that there actually has been a crash in 2017 where a Nepal army plane crashed upon landing here at the airport with one fatality. Now, this is the twin otter that we are spawned into right now. As you can see, Tara Air, they actually fly this plane in real life at this place as well. Because this plane is a stall plane made for stall ports like this. Or in other words, this plane doesn't need a long runway, like, at all. But we're actually getting quite close to the edge, but that was okay, I guess. We uh, were able to take off just fine. That was very pleasant. By the way, let me just apologize for the very, very much broken scenery here. It doesn't work for some reason, but that's another story for another time. Let's focus on the actual flying planes part, <laughs> right? Now, as you could just see, the runway is sloped a little bit. It's not that exciting. Stream. There are definitely worse airports like Kosovel. Also, this runway is located on kind of a, I don't know what you call this, like a, a plateau, I guess. This is actually a very, very, very nice choice of location for a runway here. I mean, literally, we are in the middle of nowhere in a random valley. It is really hard to build runways at places like this, which is why all these runways here are super short. Now, let's go ahead and fly some other planes here. Am I right? Ah, uh, this is going to be actually pretty interesting. I mean, we can try the Dornier which also flies here in real life. Even the infamous Tara Air flies this plane here. It is slightly bigger than the Twin Otter, I feel. So this can be a challenge as well. No, actually, it's not. This is just another stall plane, meaning they can fly everywhere as well. These are the planes I really like. You know, it's the turboprop engines that give this plane the ability to operate pretty much anywhere because they have a lot of reverse thrust power as well. All righty, welcome aboard the Dornier 228. This is a very nice plane. Let's take a look at the interior. This is actually... this can carry quite a lot of people after all. Not bad. Let's uh, get this plane landed. Put the gear down. Yeah, this plane here actually has landing gear that is retractable. Let's actually try making a smooth touchdown as well. The thing about this runway here is that it's pretty narrow. So especially in bigger planes, we will actually run into the problem of not hitting the runway properly, like, you know, landing on the grass partially. By the way, here we go. We have landed the Dornier 228 here. That was a pretty nice landing. That was a very, very quick stop. Yeah, this plane's performance, it keeps blowing me away. That was, by the way, a very, very bad landing. I'm not gonna lie about that. But, you know, it was successful, which is okay. So, yeah. In this case, I would always go for the Pilatus PC-24. Because it's, like, one of the only private jets that can actually fly on short runways. And, yes, this is actually a jet now. You know, at these very, very extreme runways like this, with a length of, like, 500 meters, mostly the PC-24 is actually the biggest plane to be able to land on these runways. Because, you know, it's a pretty tough plane, so let's see what it can do for us. Now, by the way, the elevation of this airport is not that much of a problem. We're only at 4,300 feet or 1,300 meters. Okay, that actually is quite a high elevation, but, you know, it's not that bad. I have definitely been to airports with a higher elevation, even in real life, which is really not that much of a bad thing, because, you know, as I have said in all my previous videos, basically, the plane needs a longer runway or, in general, performs worse 
in higher altitudes. Which is why Lukla, which is at 9,000 feet, is such a problem. Now, come on, get this plane landed. All of this is gonna get pretty close. All right, I don't know why, but I kind of hesitated on actually touching down this plane, which is why I ended up actually pushing down the plane, creating a very hard landing, but a successful one. I think the landing gear is just fine. You know, it's a, it's a pretty tough plane. Oh, that was on the nose gear. And there we go, we have stopped. But I don't know what, what plane to move on with, right? Maybe something like the C-130, which is like way bigger now. The C-130 is actually the most rugged plane that there is, obviously used by military. It has even been used on aircraft carriers. Yes, there has actually been a few cases where a C-130, yes, this plane landed on an aircraft carrier, which is, uh, <laughs> I mean, if it works, which it did, then why not? Now this runway length is actually pretty close to the length of an aircraft carrier uh, at 500 meters, which is, by the way, still a very, very huge ship. You know, just 500 meters, Jesus Christ, when you think about that. But it's not that long for planes to stop, though. Let's see if the C-130 can fly here as well. Oh my god. All right, I really wanted to make sure to get this plane down, which uh, kind of ended up in a crash landing. Jesus Christ. I mean, that was a very quick stop, I guess. Yeah, that was actually not bad, huh? So what I did here was I applied reverse thrusters in midair in order to get this plane down as quickly as possible, which always makes for a very, very quick stop. The problem, though, is that we had to sacrifice one engine or, or two, maybe, uh, which is the result of this very hard landing. But honestly, better than, you know, overrunning into the valley, right? Okay, never mind. Yeah, I totally broke this plane, obviously. We can move on. Let's maybe try some airliner now. Maybe let's try the F Auker VFW614. As you can see, this is a small regional plane that has a very interesting engine placement. A lot of people actually say that this is a very ugly plane. I do not think so, personally, but, you know, it flies, which is good. I think this was one of the first jet airliners as well, uh, so this will be interesting. It is uh, apparently pretty loud in the cockpit, but Jesus Christ, can you like shut up? Now, I made a video dedicated to this plane quite a long time ago because this plane, it actually was kind of a failure, sadly, even though it's kind of interesting, actually. Honestly, I never found it that bad. Let's go ahead and land it. Oh, that was uh, not on the runway, was it? Oh, we might have actually broken the wheels. Yeah, I think we went a little hard on the brakes, which actually broke the tires, but <laughs> whatever, we stopped. Yeah, this is the landing. Uh, oh, I mean, this would have been a survivable landing, though. And there we go. You know, this plane, it can actually carry quite an amount of passengers, even though this is actually a special version of the Fokker that has a special seat configuration, as you can see right here. You know, this is kind of cool. Now, 737. So far, we have been very, very successful with our landings and takeoffs. 737, it might work. Probably not. Let's find out. I mean, you know, we've had a pretty successful history of landing this plane on very, very, very short runways. And maybe we can expand that history today. Let me just say this is not going to be that much of a smooth landing. I mean, I mean, kinda. Oh, yeah. All right, this was an overrun. Even though you have to say here, we didn't use the whole runway, did we? I mean, we kind of touched down towards the middle of the runway, so let's try this again, I guess. Let's really do this as perfectly as possible. I think I can do it. That was, wow, that was perfect. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, you can call me aviation god now. I managed to land a 737 on a 500 meter long runway and we actually still have quite a little bit of runway left. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if this landing was even realistic at all because in real life, we probably would have popped the tires just like in the fucker. I mean, f -ocker. I don't want to have it sound like another word that YouTube might not like and demonetize. There we go, that was pretty nice. Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, that touchdown was not good though. But a pretty quick stop anyway. So that was good. By the way, let's just admire the view of the ramp. There's even a, a donkey, I guess. Yeah, you don't want to have that sucked into your propeller. That's going to be pretty disgusting. And your propeller will be gone. You know, I don't think you should have, you know, free moving animals next to a probo-prop plane. But, you know, it's, it's up to you. The thing is, you couldn't even, like, fit a 737 on the ramp. You would have to, like, park it on the actual runway. That doesn't work out, does it? No, this landing 
worked out and we have just unloaded our passengers and loaded in some new ones here that want to fly to Nepal Ganji on the 737. This is gonna work out. You know, when it comes to runway usage, a takeoff typically needs more runway than a landing, especially up here in the mountains because, you know, again, the aircraft has less performance because the air is a lot thinner. So this can be an interesting challenge as well. Oh, no, <laughs> this is not gonna work out. 80 knots, 100 knots, barely. There we go. We have definitely run through some grass, which is something that you might not want to do. But honestly, we have uh, gained some stable flying now. That's not bad. Maybe this is not a safe idea, like, at all. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now the grass. But whatever, it could be worse, right? Now, uh, let's finish this off. 747-8. Let's do this. Now, in a previous test, we have figured out that the 747-8, at least in the simulator, only needs a 600 meter long runway to stop, which is very impressive. Let's see. Maybe we are able to stop it on a 500 meter runway as well. Uh, very much scientific videos, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's just with the plane here in the flight simulator. It's probably not realistic. The 747 probably needs a longer runway than 600 meters for a stop, but whatever, right? All righty. Welcome aboard the 747-8, I guess. I mean, what can go wrong? Okay, come on. I will try my best to get this plane somewhat stopped here. Oh, what? Yeah, that was a crash now. But I would rate this crash as a pretty survivable one. And there we go. We've actually stopped as well. So you can perfectly fly your 747s here too. No worries at all. Let's check out this landing. It wasn't that good, was it? Yeah, <laughs> we hit right on the mountain and that made the plane crash. Again, that is kind of a survivable landing. Maybe there have been a few fatalities here. But other than that, this was a pretty nice one. Now, yes, is this airport more dangerous than Lukla? Uh, probably not. Lukla also only has a fire. 500 meter long runway, but Lukla is at a higher altitude, meaning that Lukla is even a little bit more extreme than this one, even though this is very much extreme still. I think this one needs a little bit more attention as well, because this is pretty low key, honestly. I have never heard about it until today. So maybe by this video, you know, a few more people will learn about this airport. Now, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.